Hello, good evening. It's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. Welcome to a, uh, a live stream. It's been a while since I've been able to do one of these, and I'm quite excited about that. So I think we're going to just start off. Uh, I'm going to let you know right off the bat, spoiler, they are fueling, which is fantastic. Um, now, I am going to keep the Mission Control audio up, so if we do hear anything coming in from Mission Control, I'm going to stop talking for a little bit and just give it a little listen. So that being said, my friends, it's time to do a little live stream hope you guys are uh, ready to see four humans go to space because that's what we're going to be doing i love that this is uh, a normal thing now in the united states again ever since the space shuttle program ended in 2011 it is very nice that we uh have this option again so as you can tell too by uh by our countdown we're about t minus 30 minutes so uh first thing we're going to do of course if you want to know anything about upcoming rocket launches uh, where they're going to be launching from, in this case, who's launching on it, where they're going. Uh, cryo-helium loading has started. Uh, did they say cryo-helium loading or just helium loading? I, I missed that. Uh, but any of those things that, that you might be asking right now uh, in chat, you know, where are they going, et cetera, et cetera, you can always head over to a little website called everydayastronaut.com, click on pre-launch previews, and you'll see an article like this. Now, this is, uh, this is Crew 6. Uh, which is going to be taking off, hopefully, technically March 2nd in, in Florida. It's, it's March 1st for me in Central Time Zone. March 2nd for uh, for the rest of the world, basically, at this point, or anything east of me. Um, taking off at 534 UTC, bright and early, for those of you in Europe. Uh, 34 Eastern, so just after midnight uh, over there in Florida. The mission name for this, this is Crew-6, which is the United States' Crew Vehicle Mission 6, USCV-6. Um, the launch provider, the, the person or the, the company doing the launching and the, the, uh, the delivery of the payload and people, in this case, is SpaceX. Now, of course, the customer for this, this is a NASA mission. This is part of the NASA Commercial Crew Program. So, um, or the commercial, yeah, commercial crew program. Uh, and this uh, has been a beautiful partnership, as you likely know, for years now already. Um, we're coming up, this this May will be the three-year three, three year anniversary of humans flying on SpaceX's Falcon 9 so they're just really launching these things like crazy, as you know. Yeah, fantastic. All right, so the um, the launch location for this, this is, of course, taking off from historic launch complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center, Florida. Quick little side note, SpaceX is actively working on adding a, uh, a crew tower to their Slick 40 complex just right next door, a couple of kilometers away, about four kilometers away or something, uh, over in Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And that will be... Awesome just to have a secondary launch pad with the option of launching humans so they don't have to always, you know, have right now 39A is holding up a lot of weight because it's the Falcon Heavy can only launch from there. Crews can only launch from there. Um, it's, you know, and of course that you, you, it's just kind of scary to have all of your eggs in that one basket. So it's nice to have uh, Slick 40 as a backup and a secondary option just for the manifest to be able to have crew launch from there as well. So fun little side note. Um, the payload mass is not actually specified, but, you know, the uh, the crew Dragon capsule weighs, what is it, something like 13 tons? I'm sure Trevor's going to remind me. I think it's about 13 tons, if I remember right. But uh, I'll see if I can get the exact number on that. <clears throat> the Where is the spacecraft going? It is going to the International Space Station, which is about 400 kilometers above our head, or <coughs> orbiting the Earth every 90 minutes. Sorry, i am still got a little bit of a cough. Um, and that, so that's about 250 miles. Uh, it's on a 51.6 degree inclination, so it's kind of northeast and, you know, going around the Earth in a hula hoop fashion, and the Earth's spinning below it. Uh, will they be attempting to cover the first stage? Yes, they are. 
Uh, where will the first stage land? It's going to land on Just Read the Instructions, or J-R-T-I. Um, that's the name of the drone ship. How's the weather looking? The weather is currently 95% go. So that's fantastic. Um, yeah, and other than that, we are looking at this, this crazy stats here. 207th Falcon 9 launch, 175th booster landing, the 101 st how would you say that? 101th, like 101st? That sounds really weird. One, I'm gonna go with 101th uh, consecutive <laughs> booster landing. It's the ninth SpaceX crewed mission, 62nd SpaceX launch from <laughs> LC-39A. Uh, it's the sixth CCT cap, the commercial crew transportation capability mission, the fourth flight of Crew Dragon C-206 Endeavor, the fourth flight of an unused Falcon 9 booster to launch humans. This is, yeah, I noticed that I, I didn't even point that out. The um, the booster for this is... Uh, is uh, 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 B1078-1, so it's the first launch of this particular booster, which is unusual these days. Uh, 14th launch for SpaceX in 2023, and we just are in March, that's insane. Uh, 29th orbital launch attempt of 2023. Busy, busy, busy year. Um, let's see, okay, so, uh, yeah, the preach. Okay, so let's keep going here. Um, I'm waiting to hear something from, uh, you know, I kind of thought we'd maybe get into that. Um, but it has not shown up yet. I thought for sure something would would pop up here with the Mission Control audio. It has not yet. So I'm going to take some of your guys' questions. We're going to lean over here to the stream, have the stream up in the background, and uh, and I'm going to answer a few guys' questions because I don't know if maybe you were watching this first launch attempt the other day. Stage 2 cryohelium loading has started. H Stage 2 cryohelium loading has started. So they're loading up the helium on the upper stage. All right, let's uh, let's keep going here. So, uh, ooh, this is a fun little message here from Paul. Good to hear from you, Paul. How are you doing? Uh, on holiday in Orlando, I will get out on my hotel balcony to watch launch. Oh yeah, Orlando, you'll easily be able to see this. That's fantastic. I love that. Uh, let's go to another one here from Aaron Crawford. I want to thank you guys for the ongoing inspiration. I'm going to college for aerospace engineering, so thank you for that constant inspiration. Uh, it wouldn't be possible without you. Hashtag Tim Dodd Moon. Well, thank you so much, Aaron. I really, really appreciate that. That really means um, a lot. Um, let's see here. Let's keep going. Uh, Musical Wolves, of course. Hello, Musical Wolves. For days between the scrubs, does perishables on the capsule get replaced? I don't believe so. Those, you know, most of the perishables on these missions are intended to last for months, you know, six months on board the International Space Station or, or several months. Two more days on the ground in a controlled environment shouldn't be uh, too bad of a thing. By the way, I do have to point out here, uh, it's Raja Chari. Uh, if you're looking, yeah, look at right below my, my hand here. That's uh, NASA astronaut Raja Chari. He is a fellow uh, Cedar Falls, Iowa, uh, res not, I don't know, not resident, uh, he was born in Cedar, born and raised in Cedar Falls, Iowa, which is where I am right now. Uh, and frankly, the race is on between the two of us going to the moon. Uh, it, I would honestly feel, part of me would feel horrible if I were to beat uh, someone that's trained their entire life and an incredibly accomplished uh, pilot and astronaut. If some just <laughs> bloke from uh, Iowa that, you know, makes YouTube videos, ends up going to the moon before someone that's trained very, very hard. Uh, I would honestly actually feel a little bit bad, but I'd hope that uh, it all be in good fun at that point, because it's all for the greater good that that many humans are going, uh, you know, going to space and going at this point already having the capabilities of going to the moon. So pretty crazy, pretty small, you know, I think even just being astronauts, um, I think I calculated it one time, the, no the percentage of people from Cedar Falls, Iowa that are astronauts, and it's not... It's pretty crazy. It's about 10 times more than any other city that I could find or any other area. So pretty, pretty wild. All right, let's keep going here from um, uh, Park the Forge or Forg. Uh, celebrating six months of membership. Thank you so much. Hopefully you noticed as a YouTube member. And for those of you that are YouTube members and or uh, Patreon members, perhaps you noticed that we... Uh, 
we did release a new video preview and review of how to start a rocket engine. Uh, so we probably have a decent amount of work to kind of go over all the comments and feedback and make sure everything's perfect and factually accurate and there's no glitches, et cetera, et cetera. That's part of the review process. But I'm thinking that will come out next week, um, which I can't wait to get that out. So if you are a Patreon member or a YouTube member, uh, be sure and check your feeds. That review link is available and you can get it now. I'm really excited because that's like my favorite video. <laughs> uh, this is a great question here from Dylan, uh, Dylan, and we're at a perfect place to see this right now. Is the pointy end up? I'll do it. This uh, pointy end is up and the flamey end is indeed down. And you can also see while we're looking at this rocket, you know, at the Falcon 9, you do see um, the condensation on the rocket. Uh, that is from the liquid oxygen filling up the, the booster. Uh, you can, you, the reason that it's obviously doing that, what looks like smoke and condensation is because liquid oxygen is really, really cold. It's inside this, you know, thin little tank wall. You know, the walls of the, of the rocket are not very thick, uh, aluminum walls. And so obviously the walls get really cold as well, um, holding onto that cryogenic liquid oxygen that's, I think, like, what is it, minus 183 degrees Celsius. And so the atmosphere, the, the humidity in the atmosphere and the moisture in the air comes in contact with that turns into these little ice particles and, and, and the, uh, the moisture that we see. And yeah, that's what it is. It's not smoke. It's actually cold, which is just one of those fun little facts. Trevor, great question. When is the new shirt, the new full flow shirt? And, oh, I didn't bring it with me. I have, oh, I have it in the other room. Uh, the Falcon 9 model rockets and this shirt are coming out on Friday. So if you're watching this stream, you have a little heads up. Get ready on Friday. We will be releasing, re-releasing. Uh, we have a handful of Falcon 9 model rockets, a lot more than before, or more, not a lot more, more than before. So don't worry too much about them running out. They're cheaper, which is great. And uh, at the same time, you can also pick up our new full flow stage combustion cycle shirt. Hopefully you guys are excited about that. Uh, this is from Dylan. Thank you so much. Absolutely brilliant podcast with Lex Friedman. I had a fantastic time uh, with that conversation. Honestly, that was so fun for me. Uh, you know, we talked for, you know, five hours, over five hours, and uh, I didn't get bored at all. I had a great Thank time. You, uh, you know, Lex did such a good job of um, continuing to be engaging and asking questions that, uh, you know, were relevant and fun, and I just had an awesome time. So I, if you watched it, that's pretty impressive that you can get through a five-hour podcast. For those of you that haven't watched it, uh, I was the guest on Lex Friedman podcast, uh, which I'm a uh, pretty big I'm a pretty big fan of his work. So it was quite the honor to be on his show. So check that out. Um, this is from Mitch saying, "Missing you at the at the at KSE press site next time." Unfortunately, Mitch, I just I, I'm rarely out at the press site these days and um you know it's all those things always take away from me doing what i want to be doing which is uh making videos so i'm really really excited that in the past month i've been able to release three or working on three pretty heavy videos so um after the uh how do you start a rocket engine i've got a really really fun one that i think you guys are going to love uh that's in the works pretty close to done being scripted i'm going to try to shoot that as soon as i can so I'm trying to just kind of crank these things out, not travel as much and uh, not do as many live streams. Tonight was a, an exception because it's a crew mission. So, you know, <laughs> um, let's see here. How many, uh, wait, Jude Moore wants to know, are they the first Aussie to watch something live? Well, I mean, is there actually internet down in Australia? Comment if you are a fellow, fellow Australian. Uh, let's hear it for the Australians, the people out there that it's probably a reasonable time of day to be watching a rocket launch. And uh, why do I feel like the mission control audio is being very quiet? Let me listen into the, the main live stream. A great testament to the international partnerships of this program. Half the crew is you know, international. Sultan being the first uh, UAE astronaut to launch on a US vehicle from the US to have trained at Johnson Space Center. Um, an amazing, uh, you know, completion of the partnership that started several years ago, and taking that now all the way to completion, um, and just great to see, you know, NASA and space exploration being just this great unifier uh, for the world, uh, especially as you know. The here, I'm uh, I'm seeing a really really good question here actually in Discord. Uh, I want to answer this real quick. Um, this was from um, I'm gonna mispronounce your name. I, I see there. Akeo or Acelo in our Discord channel asking, I have no idea why they chose RP1 exactly. 
Um, it has higher temperature than, say, oxygen and is far less difficult to use. Uh, a positive six F9 is proceeding with prop load. And we're tracking no issues with Dragon or F9 going into launch. That's what I want to hear from Mission Control Audio. Six Dragon copy. Tracking no issues. They're going fully into prop load. That's fantastic. Yeah, baby. I love it. Okay, so why RP-1? Why do they use Carolox instead of um, hydrogen or even methane on the Falcon 9? Well, frankly, uh, Carolox is probably one of the easiest propellants to work with. You don't have to consider the cryogenic. Uh, you don't have to you know, chill it down to cryogenic temperatures and maintain that cryogenic temperature. It's actually extremely energy dense. It is, uh, you know, it takes less of the fuel. You know, your, your rocket can be physically smaller uh, to, in order to utilize the same mass of propellant with RP-1. It's the most dense of those three uh, liquid propellants. So that's, that's good. It's also, you know, very energy dense. You have a, a lot of potential for energy with it, but obviously you might not be able to get as high of, of a specific impulse as some of the others, but um, it's uh, for the first stage booster, honestly, just raw, sheer raw uh, thrust to weight ratio can win out. So, yeah, I thought that was kind of a fun little thing to, to talk about. Uh, we do talk about, again, of course, uh, as you know, like I said, next week I'll be releasing how to start a rocket engine. And we'll be talking a lot about some of the startup sequences and sort of some of the things that, uh, you know, that we're going to see here in about T minus 16 minutes. So really excited about that. I didn't even realize that my overlay was right over top of their thing. I don't love that. Um... Let me change that quick. I'm trying to think of the, of the best way to do that. That one's kind of all over the place. That's going to look real weird. Oh, I realize, too, I actually have... <laughs> I don't know if this is the right the right thing to do. We'll do that for now. Although our times, our times are pretty synced. Okay. All right, let's keep going here. Um... According to Elon, Raptor 2 has no spark plugs. So how does Raptor 2 ignite without spark plugs? Well, he actually mentioned it in uh, my last interview, and uh, this is actually something that we dive into pretty deep in the How to Start a Rocket Engine video. Um, they use they use what are called um, torch igniters in the pre-burners. So uh, those are basically almost like a, almost the thing of them as like a mini flamethrower. They have their own uh, source of fuel and oxidizer and their own little spark igniter. And then they basically create just like a little flamethrower thing, and that is lit inside of the preburners. Uh, I believe there there's redundant torch igniters in specifically in, in the Raptor. I believe there's two of them in case one of them doesn't light, and it increases reliability of startup. And then uh, because the Raptor engine uses full flow stage combustion cycle, uh, the preburners do not need. Uh, they're the only ones that are lit, and by the time they get the fuel and the oxidizer into the main combustion chamber. It arrives as a hot gas. So those two are actually pretty much ready to go. You don't need an, a separate ignition source. So that's, uh, yeah, pretty pretty awesome. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, Dylan, I, I did forget. By the way, I, did, I got out of order here. Um, oh, no, I moved that thing, though, now. Oh, crap. Man. Now you can't see our comments. Um, what's, okay, I'm going to just try moving it over for now. This is going to look real nasty, but we're going to do what we can. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> introduce what you know about the crew, please. So, we have that all written down here in our website. Again, everydayastronaut.com slash, uh, and then click on pre-launch previews. So, the commander is Stephen, uh, St <laughs> Stephen Bowen, and, uh, yeah, he's quite the accomplished, um, astronaut already, as you read from this. Um, he was on STS-126, STS-132, uh, and 133. So, yeah, he's uh, he's very accomplished. We have uh, the, the pilot is Warren Woody Hoberg, and both of these are NASA astronauts. Um, then we have a mission specialist, which is Sultan Al uh, Nayadi. I, I'm sorry, I'm probably horribly mispronouncing that, but he's from the UAE, and he is the first... Um, person from the UAE to train and fly on a U.S. vehicle, which is really exciting. And then we also have mission specialist um, Andre uh, Fedyev from uh, from Russia. And this is part of the exchange basically with the United S the ongoing exchange with Roscosmos and NASA to still uh, exchange seats, which I find that to be beautiful. I think that's, you know, uh, with the current political climate, 
Um, any kind of collaboration, any kind of, uh, you know, bridging gaps is always a good thing to me. So, um, yeah, that's the crew. Uh, I, I, I appreciate that collaboration still. I mean, that's still the whole thing with the International Space Station. It's pretty amazing that we um, still uphold such a, a tight collaboration. And just think about what that, all the work and, and what that means to actually uh, collaborate like that in space. So um, I, I think that's pretty cool. That's what I know about that. And if you want to read more about that, about that by the way, this, this article was written by... I believe this was written by Austin DeSisto, also co-authored by Trevor. So thank Austin and Trevor in chat, and be sure and read through that article. I promise you'll likely learn something. Um, all right, this is a, a good one from Ian Smith. It's amazing to see that this is considered normal. I am too young to really remember the shuttle launches. So this, to me, is amazing. And guess what? You are going to space, too. It's still crazy to me. Um, I feel like we're still a long ways out. I mean, it just feels like it hasn't hit yet for me still. Um, still today, but uh, watching crew launches like this tends to bring it home just a little bit more. So um, thank you so much, Ian. I, I really appreciate that. And then this is from um, Artemis. I like the way you spelled that. Hey, Tim, hope you have a good coffee with us. I appreciate that. I will absolutely enjoy a delicious sidecar coffee uh, tomorrow, as I do every day <laughs> when I'm home, and I just love it. So let's uh, let's see here. They're getting up. When I get around T minus five minutes, since we're not getting many uh, mission updates, uh, audio from the mission control audio from this mission, I'll probably tune into the official launch here and let it play out. Um, and because frankly, they kind of talk about the same things almost every launch. And I like answering your guys' questions. Hopefully that's why you come to this stream is to get um, answers to your very own questions. Um, and don't forget to, I don't know if we have a lot of mods right now. I don't think we do. Um, so unfortunately we're not pulling in a ton um, a ton of non super chat queued questions, uh, but I'll try to get to some of those non super chat and you know, so you don't have to like pay to get your questions answered. That's not the point of this. Uh, normally we have a pretty good queue. I think we're, uh, this was a very last minute stream for me. So I don't think people were, were prepared for this. Um, this is awesome from Nathan watching with your son, a future NASA engineer. I love that. Um, yes, absolutely. I can absolutely answer this. Can you explain what the cause of the scrub was from the last attempt? Was it the stuff that lights the engines that malfunctioned? Basically exactly right. So, um, to light a rocket engine, I'm going to summarize my own video that's coming out here. You're going, and this is true of any Dragon, fire. SpaceX confirmed crew displays configured for launch. SpaceX Dragon crew displays are configured for launch. Crew displays configured that, for launch. And once again, on behalf of the entire SpaceX team, we're honored to have you aboard Dragon Capsule Endeavor on its next trip to the International Space Station. We wish you a great mission, good luck, Godspeed, and enjoy the ride. And thanks again to everyone out there who made the vehicle, the ISS, our mission, and our crew ready for launch. Really want to thank everyone and appreciate the uh, great call, much appreciated call for the scrub the other night. Uh, it was a great uh, call and a good learning opportunity for the crew and I think for the teams. And uh, so once more to the breach, dear friends, Crew 6 is ready to launch. That's awesome. They are ready to launch. Everything's looking go t just under T minus nine minutes. Not sure if we'll have anything else, so I'll go back to finishing up this question here. Let me see if I can get it back up on screen. Uh, what was the cause of the scrub from the the other night? What was it, uh, Sunday night or Monday night? I don't remember anymore. Uh, so there was a scrub, and it was from the TTEB system, the ground-supplied TTEB. Now, TTEB is triethyl aluminum, triethyl boring, and it's a pyrophoric slash kind of, a, which is a type of hypergolic uh, starting fluid. So what you need uh, to, to make any flame anywhere is you need a fuel, you need a oxidizer, and you need a spark. You know, if you think about it right now, where I'm sitting, there is desk <laughs> that's like made out of wood-ish. Uh, there's oxygen in the air. And of course, if we had enough of a spark and enough energy, you could make a fire. We all probably hopefully have, are somewhat familiar with that. Rocket engines are not that much different. So uh, they start flowing fuel and oxidizer 
Um, well, actually, what they do is they actually first start injecting the TTEB, which is a, a premixed, you know, the triethylalum, triethylborn. They start injecting that into the gas generator and into the combustion chamber. Then they introduce oxygen into that system to start a flame because, of course, it's going to react with the oxygen being pyrophoric. That's what pyrophoric means is that it will react with oxygen. That will start uh, a flame. Then they'll introduce the fuels. So the fuels coming into an oxygen-rich environment um, with uh, a flame present, so it's just going to uh, combust immediately. And you'll see this bright green flash. The green flash is from the T-tab. It's actually, I believe, from it's from the aluminum or from the boring. I I always forget. But that's uh, that's exactly uh, what the green flash is now on uh, on the ground when they're attached to the ground uh, support equipment. All nine engines are actually fed ground supplied T-tab because you know why would you? Um, you know, have additional T-TEB canisters and all the extra weight to light all nine the engines if you don't if you don't need to use them, right? So, um, so they actually have a ground supply of that T-TEB to, to inject into those nine Merlin engines, and uh, yeah, those those um, th that system apparently on a return line. So, you know, I'm guessing I'm not exactly sure about this specifically, but I'm guessing there is you know a send line and a return line if you need to ever. You know, have, have backflow or, or a vacuum on it or something, or have some other propellant flowing the other way. Or I'm not exactly sure why there's a return line, but that did have a, a clogged filter. There was Stage a little one. bit of RP1 load complete. fuel load is complete. That's great news. Um, so yeah, they they there was something wrong. The pressure was um, probably not correct. They were noticing a, a misalignment in pressures and, you know, something was not showing up correctly on the computers. So they scrubbed the launch attempt because of that. I've actually never heard of that being a problem. That was a first from what I can recall with any Falcon 9 mission. You know, I assume that, you know, they've flown this thing 207 times. They've probably seen most things, but of course, you know, when you, when you are utilizing this ground equipment so much, there's a decent chance that, you know, debris and, and, um, FOD, you know, foreign object debris can end up, uh, you know, in, in the pumps and filters and things like that. And, you know, there's going to be scheduled regular maintenance. So that's kind of one of those things that popped up the other day. And they, uh, they obviously just replaced the filter, did a check and everything looks good to go. So, um, there, as you heard, uh, in the, in the cockpit there, uh, or in the, yeah, in the cockpit, does that make sense? Do we still call it a cockpit? <laughs> I know that's dumb, but, uh, yeah, they, uh, it, they were thanking the call of uh, of making sure that the T-TEB was all good to go for the launch. So, uh, yeah. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start pulling up the main audio. Dragon and is in configure for terminal count. Now that we're into terminal count, I'm going to listen to... We're going to listen into the other audio. I will answer every question that I get, basically, here. Um, so bear with me. I'll probably stick around for a little bit longer after launch and after Seco um, to answer a few more of your guys' questions. And, uh, you know, this is going to be a great launch. So I'm, I'm going to I am going to listen in here. Indicated by the half black and half white indicators, the black being the solar panels that provide power to come back, the Dragon come back. on its transit to the International Space Station. Got that confirmation of strong back retract. We should be able to visually see... That strong back. The strong back will retract about two degrees away from the vehicle. Then at liftoff, the strong back will actually go back to 45 degrees. That strong back is part of the transporter erector, which provides uh, the liquids and gases and uh, electrical connections to the vehicle. As Gary pointed out, those clamp arms opened up underneath the trunk, just above the first stage. And you can see that action happening now as that initial retraction just a couple degrees away from the vehicle. At this point in time, fueling remains underway, excuse me, propellant load remains underway. All fuels are loaded, that RP-1 um, liquid oxygen. Page one, page one, complete. Flow complete. There, we just heard that call out that that is all done. That's fantastic. Second stage lock load still underway. That will wrap up at about T minus two minutes. I've got the stream cranked by 
12 decibels, I can go up to 15. Now that that first stage liquid oxygen uh, load is complete, we'll see um, some more of that white gaseous cloud forming around the vehicle uh, due to those lines being Dragon closed off. Dragon is in off. terminal count and on internal power. All right, good call out there indicating that Dragon is running on its own power. We are in the terminal count now at T minus two minutes and 29 seconds. The crew remains comfortable there on the right hand side of your screen. About 15 seconds remaining in stage two locks load. Getting close, my friends. Like I said, guys, stick around um, after Seco and after they're in orbit. Um, I will Stage answer. Stage two, locks load complete. That's great. Stage two, locks load complete. I will answer more of your guys' questions. Dragon is in auto idle. You heard those calls. The Falcon 9 fully fueled with RP-1 rocket fuel as well as the liquid oxygen. That call of Dragon is in auto idle. There's going to be a series Gas of calls. Has started. Expect lightning. There's the gas closeout purging the lines of the fuel that has supplied the Falcon 9 with RP-1 and liquid oxygen. We'll also wait for a call of the arming of the flight termination system. The Dragon flight computers are configured for launch. Flight termination system will allow Falcon 9 to talk to Dragon on the ride uphill. Terminate the flight, Falcon issuing an abort. Dragon is in countdown. T minus one minute and counting. Dragon is in countdown. Everything's yeah, looking good for launch. It's go time. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. SpaceX, Dragon, copy, go for launch. T minus 30 seconds. You minus 30 seconds and counting. All teams pulled go. Fifteen seconds. Ready for an on-time launch for the instantaneous one. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Engines full power and lift off and through six. Go Dragon, go Falcon. Number six, now launching on Endeavour's third flight to the International Space Station. Vehicles pitching down range, 1.7 million pounds of thrust provided by the nine Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. Hearing good call, stage one propulsion is nominal. Love to hear it, love to hear it. to the sixth rotational crew mission on board Dragon and Falcon 9. Power and telemetry nominal. Stage one throttle down. So there we have heard the call out indicating that the first stage engines will begin to throttle down in preparation for max Q, which is the moment of maximum aerodynamic pressure that the vehicle will experience during flight. Vehicle is supersonic. Call up there indicating the vehicles traveling faster than the speed of sound. Max Q. Stage one throttle up. All right, now that we're past Max Q. One Bravo. Copy, one Bravo. That oh, one Bravo indicator are different abort modes that are called that allow the ground teams and the crew to track about the position of the Falcon 9 and the Dragon as they make their way up the eastern seaboard. In the event of an abort, these different abort modes would indicate about the position where Dragon Effect would land, started. as well as uh, indicate what series of maneuvers Dragon would indicate. But so far, we're hearing good calls on the performance of the Falcon 9 on its ride uphill. One minute, 53 seconds into flight. It's beautiful. 
We're about 30 seconds away from main engine cutoff, which will be followed quickly by stage separation and second engine start. Sounded like that an elephant. Which is the ignition of that and back <laughs> engine on the second stage. Did you guys hear that? That was awesome. Now about 10 seconds away from main engine cutoff. Looking up at the second stage. That's the pusher that's going to help push the two stages apart. Two alpha. Copy, two Stage alpha. separation confirmed. There you can see on your screen confirmation of stage separation okay. as well as ignition of that second stage engine. Awesome. Absolutely flawless. Second stage is now carrying the Crew-6 astronauts to orbit. Beautiful view there on the left-hand side of your screen coming from the first stage, which as you can see is still gaining in altitude. It has not yet uh, reached its apogee. A beautiful view of the Florida Space Coast there in the background. I love that view. Meanwhile, we're tracking good performance on that MVAC engine. On the screen to your right, we'll be hearing periodic performance calls about once every minute with the status of the trajectory of the second stage and the Crew-6 astronauts that are inside Crew Dragon Endeavor. We'll also be Position hearing call outs. Bermuda. Just like you heard just there, as we pass over the various ground stations along the ascent track. Dragon, SpaceX, nominal trajectory. And there's that performance call out. Dragon As for the first stage there on the left-hand side of your screen, that first stage still gaining in altitude, although um, that gain is slowing down. Um, it will be making its way back down to Earth, landing, uh, attempting a landing on our drone ship. Just read the instructions which is located um, off the Florida coast by a couple hundred miles. The MVAC engine on stage two burns for six minutes after second stage ignition. We'll continue to see this engine burn until about eight and a half minutes into today's flight. Dragon, SpaceX, nominal trajectory. SpaceX, Dragon, nominal trajectory. It's just amazing how Again, reliable these performance calls this. happen once a minute. Flight team's continuing to track the Falcon 9 and its ascent. Everything's looking good so far. You'll also continue to hear those check-ins of the ground stations as we pass them. At this point in time, we're roughly two minutes away from the next major event, which will be the entry burn for the first stage. We will relight three engines, uh, three M1D engines on that first stage to help slow the vehicle down uh, as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. We're approaching 200 kilometers in altitude. It's about 124 miles. Meanwhile, velocity. Dragon, SpaceX, nominal trajectory. Good trajectory calls. About to pass 12,000 kilometers SpaceX per hour. Dragon, nominal trajectory. It's about 7,500 miles per hour. We did have a. Everything looking nominal for both first and second stages. Now coming up to T plus six and a half minutes into flight. <clears throat> we had a great question here in our Discord um, from Bradley asking the ring on Most the MMAC nozzle. Here now are the performance calls in the second stage. In about a minute is when we'll see uh, a series of events in rapid succession. It's been a pretty good pace since second stage ignition. Uh, about a, uh, less than a minute from now, we'll start to see Dragon, more action SpaceX, on the first stage. Nominal trajectory. Okay, I'm just gonna, we'll just answer this question here real quick. 
So the uh, the you'll see a little ring kind of right right above like where the you know the glow, and then you kind of see those those fingers on the nozzle, and then you see a little bit of like a it almost looks like a snail around the nozzle, um, and right here you have a really good view of it. Um, kind of going down and then it goes around the nozzle and that's actually uh, the exhaust from the gas generator that powers the pumps is actually pumped into the the nozzle um, <clears throat> there's stage one landing burn on the left side by the way fantastic um, so the the nozzle uh, extension is actually cooled by the cooler so there's <laughs> cooler gases coming out of the gas generator and that's piped and then it provides a little bit of a film barrier between uh, the hot combustion gas and the niobium nozzle wall of the of the nozzle extension on the <clears throat> Merlin vacuum engine. Now uh, you'll notice that the Merlin vacuum nozzle extension does glow bright red because it radiates heat away. It's not actively cooled, it doesn't have regen channels through it like the rest of the Merlin engines um, and like the and even like the combustion chamber of the Merlin engine. And so it's uh, there. There's basically just some cooler gas that's being pushed up against the walls, going down the nozzle. It's very cool. I just love that the, the F1 engine that powered the Saturn V did a very similar thing, and I just think it's super cool. Literally. Trajectory, good performance on the Dragon and Falcon 9. Seco second stage engine cutoff would be coming at eight minutes forty eight seconds. Coming up on that event. Prince Dragon, Shannon. Shannon. Copy, Shannon. Now off the coast of Shannon, Ireland. Standing by for Seco. Oh, if he started, did I say landing burn instead of entry burn? MVAC shutdown. MVAC shutdown. Stage one landing burn. And here comes landing burn. And there we heard the call out indicating that landing burn. Dragon, SpaceX, we have a nominal orbit insertion. Great news there for... SpaceX Dragon copies nominal orbital insertion. Launch escape system disarmed. For Dragon Endeavor. Stage one, landing late deploy. Attempting to land on our drone ship, just read the instructions. Stage one, landing is possible. And there you can see on your screen, and also indicated by the cheers behind me. Successful landing of this booster. It's first trip to space, and therefore it's first landing. 101st consecutive landing. 101st consecutive landing. So this is just getting ridiculous. I mean, genuinely, you know, the landing of the Falcon 9 booster has become more reliable than the space shuttle was period that's pretty incredible so wow awesome 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 very cool Sorry, you completed guys had, its had job uh, with audio. propelling the astronauts through the six minutes of the second stage and of course the more than two and a half minutes of the first stage continuing in this coast period we're heading to about the 12 minute mark after launch so we're approaching 11 minutes right now but it's great to see the crew in orbit uh, of course, we are waiting for that step separation. You can see this view right here of the MVAC engine, the second stage really in just an idle position, really just coasting, not many commands being issued from the Falcon 9. But of course, at the very end, we'll actually issue the command for separating the Dragon from the Falcon 9. You'll see a series, you may see a series of burns. The Draco engines uh, on the service section of the Draco will fire and uh, increase uh, separation. So while we wait for separation here, let's keep answering a few of you guys' questions. I think uh, pretty decent time to do that. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, okay, Eric Frazier. Hey, Tim. Always love the videos. Stoke was great, but I've missed the live streams. Good to see you again. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, I mean, honestly, back in the day, I used to stream every launch because there's only like five to ten launches a year, <laughs> so it's really easy to stream every launch. It didn't take up a ton of time. It didn't take up... Um, you know, it didn't interrupt things. 
Um, and yeah, I've been traveling a ton still, unfortunately. Um, a lot more than I would probably like to be traveling. But it's all been fun traveling. I went to Amsterdam. There we go. There is separation. There you can see on your screen confirmation. Dragon separation confirmed. Of that separation confirmed. So cool. Dragon Endeavor is now floating free in space. I love it. They make That's it look right. so the Falcon easy. Dragon CE here. Welcome to orbit. Congratulations. Your flight is exactly four years after the flight of the Demo 1 mission. Like Andre said, all the best things take two tries. Happy that we could get you off tonight. Uh, if you enjoyed your ride, please don't forget to give us five stars. Over to LD for some words. Also, a friendly reminder to put your sushi orders in for CRS 27. Have a safe ride to the space station, and we look forward to seeing you when you get home. Thank you for flying SpaceX. Is that right? Was it signal for me first? And SpaceX Dragon copies all. That was fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> the Crew 6 astronauts, of course, uh, having a strong bond. And SpaceX Dragon, we'd like to really for the great ride to orbit today. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. It may have taken two rides, but it's two times, but it was worth the trip. And uh, I guess I'll pass it over to Woody for some words. Yeah, SpaceX Dragon, just want to say as a rookie flyer, that was one heck of a ride. Thank you. But I would say put it is an absolute miracle of engineering, and I just feel so lucky that I get to fly on this amazing machine. Thanks to SpaceX, thanks to NASA, commercial crew program, and our international partners. Um, a lot of innovation went into this, tireless work effort, and a lot of pain, painstaking attention to detail and focus on testing. And I think that's what makes it all possible to fly humans in space. Thank you. Some really nice words. Everybody, uh, allow me to say a few words in Arabic first. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa salam al fada. Bas bagayat ashkar ummi wa boy wa ashkar aelti. Shukran al-Qiyad al-Rashida. Wa shukran li Merkaz Muhammad bin Rashid al fada. Li atoni al thiqa hadi. Wa kadalik ashkar kulman jahazna wa darabna. Li hadi al lahda al-tarikhiya. Min mukhtalaf wa kalat al fada fi anha al alam. شكرا لكم جزيلا شكرا سبيسيك لإصارنا الفضاء I would like to say thank you to, for everybody thanks to my parents my family thanks to our leadership the Mohammed Barash Space Center for their trust thank you for everybody who trained us and got us ready for this mission this is incredible launch with incredible amazing thank you so much and last but not least, thank you, NASA. Thank you, SpaceX, for flying us to space. Go Dragon, go SpaceX. And allow me to introduce our fifth crew member. His name is Suhail, and Suhail is the Arabic name for the star Canobus. And in the Middle East, we anticipate the appearance of Canobus because it marks the end of summer and the beginning of cool time. And Canopus is actually the second brightest star in the night sky. And this is the second flight for uh, Suhail, because his 
flew with uh, astronaut Hazar Mansouri in 2019. And many people think Suhail is uh, an, an alien, but to me, on Earth in a space suit, but with high ambitions. Thank you once again, and talk to you from the ISS. Love that. And Dragon SpaceX, we copy all those words. Uh, at this time, I can provide you an update that uh, we had nominal dehumidifier activation and service section Draco checkouts. Uh, for your awareness, uh, on hard capture hook five, we did swap to backup motors. So you'll see that the uh, nose cone opening did swap to backup. However, all hooks did indicate that they were traveling and look good on backup. Position signal. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, you know at this point they're kind of just getting into operations of going on to orbit. We've got a lot of questions to answer, and I want to get to bed relatively soon. So uh, I'm gonna kind of keep this up here and just keep answering your questions. Um, I'm not entirely sure what this question means from Willie V. How long until you think travel here on Earth? I don't know if you mean point to point. Um, that's kind of what I'm guessing is you were talking about point to point here on earth. Um, I, uh, decades, probably two or three decades before we have that kind of redundancy and, and safety factor and, uh, experience before that's even remotely an option in my opinion. Um, film crew tech said it's pronounced 101st as in 101st airboard. Hey, I guess that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I was struggling with that so much. Classic. Uh, Justin Mead, fantastic question. Um, Trevor in our Discord uh, enlightened and gave me the correct answer that there are 20 Falcon 9. Um, oh, there's the, uh, the nose cone opening. There are 20 booster cores in SpaceX's fleet. Now, they're all Block 5. Uh, there are two that are Falcon Heavy center cores, and two of those are Falcon Heavy side boosters. So that leaves 16 Falcon 9s that are um, dedicated Falcon 9s, and it's crazy how many of them have had, you know, we're getting up around that 10-plus mark. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Uh, Dylan, good to hear from you. Don't have to apologize. Thank you. Who hosts my launch live stream? We don't know for sure yet. I'm pushing pretty hard to try to see how much um, I will be able to live stream, uh, including on launch, but only time will tell. That's obviously what I'm going to push for to really bring the experience uh, to you as best as I possibly can. But we'll see. Um, other than that, we'll probably have to just bring some friends in and have some friends uh, stream it. Um, let's see. Am I going to bring my own zero-G indicator on my flight? And what might that be? I have no idea. I haven't thought that far ahead. But, um, man, oh, man. I don't know what I'm going to... I don't know what I'm going to bring. I mean, I'll definitely bring something for some kind of mild zero-G indicator, but maybe we'll have a crew-based one that we, uh, you know, all look to and things like that. So I don't know if um, I don't know if we'll all be able to bring our own zero-G indicator or not, but we will see. Uh, what are you going to look most forward to when you're going to space? I mean, I'm really looking... I'm definitely looking forward to zero-G and just experiencing that, you know, long-term. Um... I think I'm oddly excited to see what sleeping and waking up and dreaming is like in space. I mean, I know that's dumb, but just waking up and being like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm still floating around. Uh, really can't wait to see the Earth um, from the perspective of the moon and seeing the uh, seeing Earth rise from the far side of the moon. Can't wait for that. Um, yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot that I'm looking forward to. Um, there's a lot of, like, photos and video stuff that I'm really excited to, to take part in. And, of course, just excited to do live streams and share my experience with you guys. Um, <laughs> thank you, Vincent. I think this is just a uh, uh, Rocket Man reference. I'm not, entirely, I'm not entirely sure about the lettuce reference, but I appreciate that. Um, thank you, Dylan. I appreciate the comment again. Great to hear from you still. And again, I appreciate that. Um, could Falcon Heavy launch Dragon um, and beat Russia four-hour trip to the ISS? Oh, it wouldn't take a Falcon Heavy. You could do a four-hour rendezvous with a Falcon 9. Um, there's nothing... Yeah, there's there's nothing necessarily special about Soyuz. It's more... I don't actually know exactly why Soyuz can get away with it. 
there's something specific with the hardware, um, just with the docking and rendezvousing, um, that allows them to do a direct rendezvous like that. And I'm not entirely sure. It, there's nothing physical about Falcon 9 and the performance of Dragon that would prevent you doing a four-hour trip to the International Space Station. Falcon Heavy would be complete overkill. Um, definitely not like a limit on uh, on Delta V for that. So, Ban, um, great coverage, Tim. Question, what is the job title of those announcers and how much do they earn? Actually, each person, specifically on SpaceX's live stream. So this is, these, are, these streams are kind of confusing because this is the NASA stream that we're seeing right now. Um, the other two in Mission Control, one is a SpaceX employee. The other is a NASA employee. Um, I have no idea what the NASA personnel make. Um, but I can tell you that the SpaceX, um, the, the Kate Tice who we see on, on comms, as well as, um, oh my gosh, why am I blanking on her name right now? <laughs> Jesse. Um, both of them work, at, they aren't presenters for SpaceX. They are engineers. Um, I, I forget what title they have now. Um, Kate, let me think. Oh my God, they've both moved up in the company so much I can't keep up with them anymore. But uh, I think one's like booster production lead and the other is, I, I can't remember, honestly. Wait, when did this happen? Huh. Wait, sorry, I'm listening to this and you guys aren't. <laughs> at a rocket launch, and so he wanted to bring her back to propose, and it happened right here at the NASA Kennedy Space Center. What a neat love That's story, a cool, huh? Yeah, what That's a great cool. story, yeah. Congratulations to both of them. Okay, so anyway, yeah, um, Jesse Anderson is an engineer, and, uh, and so is Kate Tice. I, don't, I can't recall their exact positions, but um, they get paid engineering salaries. I don't think they really get paid to do the streams. I think it's just something they do for fun. Maybe they do get paid some, some overtime or something, but... Yeah, it's, their job is not just to be presenters for SpaceX, uh, if that helps you at all. Uh, thank you so much from Mr. Topperl, and um, this is from um, Al Horian. Hi, Tim. Will your mission allow you to see the far side of the moon or just some of it in daylight? That would be cool. No idea yet. Totally depends on the phasing of the moon. Don't forget, once the full moon here on Earth, the, the far side of the moon is completely uh, dark. Um, if it's a you know half moon, then it's 50-50. If it's a new moon here on, on Earth, then the, the far side of the moon will be fully illuminated. I would definitely hope, I mean, honestly, I'd be fine with like a 50-50 experience, you know, something where uh, you get to watch the moon uh, as you fly up to it and then see, you know, parts you've never seen before with your own eyes. I, I think that'll be awesome. I just hope that it's not fully a new moon here. Uh, I think that would be pretty great. So, all right, my friends. Um, I think it's time that I, oh, uh, Star, hey, Starable just became a member. I really appreciate that. Um, friendly reminder, again, if you uh, are a YouTube member or a Patreon supporter, uh, check your links right now in the member page on the little home feed thing there. So Starable, be sure and uh, check out. I do have a new video for you to review. It is how to start a rocket engine. You can leave your comments or ask questions or whatever, um, you know, just, just, I, this is my favorite part is just making sure that we have everything right before it reaches the public eyes. Make sure we don't have any misspellings or misinformation. Um, there are no glitches, no animation errors, all that kind of stuff. So um, I love that you <laughs> watch these videos and give me, it's fun because, you know, you know that as soon as it goes to YouTube, people are going to be pointing these things out anyway. So this is our chance um, to, as a thank you for me is like, here you get early access to this video, but it also works two way because now I get more eyes on it beforehand and we get a chance to correct it before it becomes public. So um, if you want access to that and want to help out and make sure that the videos that we produce are tippity top, then head over to patreon.com slash everyday astronaut, or you can become a YouTube member like Starbowl just did. Um, but that, yeah, like I said, also pay attention um, on Friday. Ooh, it looks like we just got a few new members. Um, thank you again, Mr. Top Roll, but also Hugh Wrinkle just became a member as well as Mason Rayfuse and Roland uh, Lauger also became members. And again, guys, stay tuned. Uh, Friday, we will be releasing uh, the new Full Flow Stage Combustion Cycle shirts as well as a restock of the Falcon 9 model rockets uh, that we have that I'm so excited to get back in stock. So stay tuned for those. If you have email alerts for our website, you might want to sign up on those so you don't miss out. Um, if you are also, by the way, a, a Patreon member or 
uh, YouTube member, I will also give you guys a little bit of a heads up, like, hey, T minus 15 minutes or something, because we don't know, I don't know exactly when we're going to be releasing, but I'll give you a little bit of a heads up just so you can hopefully get everything ready to go. Um, so you don't miss out this time. And lastly, we have Durzer808 becoming a member. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, I can't wait for you guys to see these new videos, the one that I'm working on right now, um, as well as, uh, yeah, as well as what's coming up after this. I think you're going to really love it. And don't forget, guys, uh, Most ex I think most exciting is that we are coming up on getting closer and closer to Starship Orbital. We're working really hard to make sure that live stream is going to be amazing with some incredible views, incredible tracking assets, um, better than anything we've ever done before. It's going to be top, top, top notch. So I hope that you guys are tuning in with us on launch day for Starship Orbital. You're not going to want to miss that. I promise you, you're not going to want to miss it. <laughs> Um, also, thank you from Schizo Jedi. 43 months of membership. That's amazing. Tim going to space. It still is crazy. All right, my friends. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go to bed and call it a night. So thank you so much for all of you who tuned in and hung out with me. It really genuinely means a lot to me. Uh, sorry this was so last minute. I didn't know that I was going to be available and that everything was going to work out, that I was going to be hanging out and ready to, to watch the launch with you. So thank you so much for all those that watched. That's going to do it for me. I'm Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut, bringing space down to Earth for everyday people. Goodbye, everybody.